Today I'm going to go over the chapter 12 comprehension check. These are called reduction oxidation problems. So number four, you get introduced to a galvanic cell. I hope you make one of these in labs. They're really kind of cool if you can get it to work. But it's really the science experiment that happens inside a battery. And so inside this experiment, you usually have like two vessels. And on one side, you have a cathode. And on another side, you have an anode. And we will draw a picture of it for comprehension check number six, but I haven't drawn one yet. And so basically on one side of it, we have some magnesium metal and it's becoming Mg2+. So what is happening between magnesium to Mg2+, is it's actually losing its electrons. It's becoming more positive, so it's losing its negative electrons. And in the reading, it should have taught you that when it's losing electrons, that's oxidation for Leo, and that actually takes place on the anode. So oxidation happens on the part of the cell called the anode. I'm gonna go over question number six, and then we'll actually come back to question number five. So for question number six, they actually give you two reactions that power a galvanic cell, and they want you to draw the cell, labeling each side, labeling the solution, talking about which way the electrons flow, and all that information. So you're just gonna have to bear with me because I am definitely not an artist. But in your galvanic cell, you have two beakers or vessels that you'll use in lab. And in each one, you're gonna have a liquid. And you also have enome electrodes. For this experiment, they actually tell you iron's a solid. So I know because it's a solid, it's this metal electrode that I'm sticking into solution. And so I also then know that I have a cobalt solu solution and it's an aqueous solution. And it's reacting to make an iron aqueous solution and a cobalt solid. So these are really weird to me to draw. You kind of just have to try to figure them out, but I know I have iron metal and it's gonna be in an iron solution. And so the iron solution here, so in this one I have iron and it's in an Fe2 plus solution. And on the other side, I actually have this solution. in this iron is actually going from having an oxidation state if we wrote it up here of zero to plus to two plus and so when it's doing that it's losing electrons and loss of electrons is oxidation and I want you to label and we know what oxidation is the anode side this is the cathode side now that I've labeled my iron, I've labeled my reactants, yes, technically this could be cobalt because I know that I have solid cobalt in the products, but it also could be any other metal and cobalt will just go from this solution and it will form on that cathode there. So yes, this could be cobalt, but it doesn't have to, so I'm not gonna label it with it. Since Iron is losing its electrons. Its electrons are going this way. Iron is losing its electrons. So you're gonna be drawing its electrons going from it because it's going from a zero to a two plus. So it comes over this way. We also have one other part that gets left out and it's this piece of paper or paper towel and it's called a salt bridge. Basically what happens is, is as this is reacting, electrons are getting shoved over here and you will eventually have such a buildup of electrons, this will become so negative charged that they won't keep coming because like charges repel each other. So if you let the buildup of electrons keep going, the flow will stop after a while because they'll start repelling each other. And so we put this salt bridge but it allows some of the charge to flow back to balance out so it can keep going. So I skipped question number five, but we'll go back to question number five because question number five says that a student makes one of these galvanic cells and it's running really well for a while, but it stops to work. And there's plenty, there's enough reactants, 
you've got enough reactants on each side of the cell and it asks what would probably happen. Well, the likely problem is that you didn't put your salt bridge here. And so it works really well for a while until you have such a buildup of electrons that it cannot keep pushing them over. 6B is yet again drawing another um, galvanic cell. There is a typo in my book, so I don't know if you have the same printing of the book that I have, but my book does not have this two in front of the chromium, so it's actually not a balanced equation. So go ahead and add that if your book doesn't have it. So for this equation, we're taking iodine and we're doing chromium. So I wanna figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Iodine is a homonuclear diatomic here and it has a oxidation state of zero. And here I didn't write it down, forgot, but it actually tells you that as iodine is a negative oxidation state. So if it's going from zero to a one, negative one, it is actually gaining electrons, so that is reduction. And so let's start to draw this thing. It actually doesn't give me any of my reactants in the solid form, so I don't know what the metal electrodes are in this compound. But I do know that I have a solution containing chromium 2 plus, and I have a solution containing iodine. Now, also what's gonna be happening is the chromium is going from being a two positive to a three positive. So it is losing electrons. And so as it loses electrons, you have in this solution chromium three plus, and as iodine is gaining electrons, it becomes this iodine one, like with the negative charge. So that's your, both your solutions. So we have our electrons here. Chromium is losing electrons. It's going from being the two plus to the three positive. So losing electrons is loss of electrons as oxidation. And so this is actually your anode. And so therefore this is your cathode. And electrons flow from my anode to my cathode. And you would also need your salt bridge. Question seven, it gives us two, two equations to balance. Now, when you're balancing a redox equation, you actually kind of have to add a separate step to the old way of balancing equations. So for these, you have to pay attention to the amount of electrons on each side. So you have to have the same amount of electrons on each side. Show the electrons being the same on each side by the total charge being the same. First, let's calculate the oxidation state. So aluminum is, an is all by itself an element. So its oxidation state of this is zero. And copper, they give me a one. And aluminum actually goes to having an oxidation state of plus three. And copper all by itself is a zero. So it's going from being a plus one to a zero. If you look at aluminum, it is going from zero to three plus, which means it's actually losing three electrons. So I need to make sure since this guy's losing three electrons, that three electrons are gained on the other side. And so copper is going from a plus and to a zero. So it is actually gaining one electron. So now I need to make that happen three times. Remember, aluminum is giving away three electrons and I need copper to gain three. So I'm actually gonna have copper do that three times throughout this equation so that the electrons balance out. And since I have to have it do it three times, I need three coppers to make. And so now the charges balance out. For question seven, part B, it's the same. They give us an equation. It actually looks balanced, one chromium to one chromium, one nickel to one nickel, but that's not that easy. Um, since this is a redox equation, we actually have to make sure that we start with the same amount of electrons that we end with. So let's go ahead and write all the oxidation states that we don't have already. So chromium is an element, it's all by itself. So it's an oxidation state of zero. They give me nickel, they give me the chromium in the products and the nickel in the products then is just gonna be zero. So if we're looking at chromium, what is happening is it's going from being a zero to a three plus. So it's actually losing three electrons. 
And if I had one nickel here and I have a two plus to a zero, it is actually gaining two electrons. So I've got basically chromium losing three and nickel gaining two. Well, that doesn't balance out, right? Three and a two. But I know that if I could get all of these to have a total of six electrons, I think we could balance that out because I just did two times three is six. That's their common, their common factor. And so let's say I do two chromiums. Two chromiums are gonna lose a total of three electrons each, which would be a total of six electrons. And if I did three nitrogens, so each nitrogen, yeah, each nitrogen is losing two electrons and there's three of those, so there's six. So there's six electrons being traded out in this equation. Question eight, you can really get straight from the reading, but it wants you to identify the reactants found on the positive side of the lead acid battery and on the negative side of the lead acid battery. So I've written down the equation from a lead acid battery. PB is the symbol for lead. And so let's go through oxidation states and see if we can figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So a lead by itself is just good old oxygen there. And here we have, it's good old, it's not oxygen, it's zero. Lead with O2, so if I know oxygen is a two minus, this lead has to be a four plus, because two times two is four. Hydrogens are each a plus one. This is a total here, two hydrogens of plus two. And if oxygens are a charge of two negative, so two times four is negative eight. So this guy has to be a six. I know I'm doing these really fast. You'll get a lot of practice in them. And so the same down here for sulfate. So really lead is what is happening going on here. So it's actually coming, we have two compounds that contain lead and they're going into one compound. So let's just look at for both of them. So lead goes from being a zero to a plus two here. And from here, it goes from being a four plus to a plus two. So when it's being just good old PB, and then we have PbO2. What's happening for lead is it's going from zero to a positive two is it's losing electrons. When you're losing electrons, your oxidation and oxidation takes place at the anode. So this is considered the anode. And then this would be the cathode. There's a really good job in the book of analyzing this whole equation if you want to go back through it. Question number nine tells us the inside of a dry cell battery has the pH of 13.9. Which type of battery is it? And so if you'll remember from last chapter, 13.9 is on the basic end of the pH scale. And so I can actually eliminate some of these really quickly. Um, if I'm looking for something that's basic, I'm going to make a good guess that it's not an acid battery. And if you know from the reading, but you may not know, zinc carbon actually has an acidic salt bridge to it, but alkaline is another name for basic, which you may be familiar with, but this basically means basic. So this is going to be an alkaline battery. All right, number 10 tells us that you have a piece of gold jewelry and you want to determine if it's gold or if it's just electroplated with gold. How could you do it without destroying the, the jewelry? And then it says, hint, um, this has something to do with in chapter one. If you'll remember in chapter one, we did density and density is the mass of something divided by the volume of it. So density would be how you could actually tell if a gold was solid gold. You take the volume of it, you could do like water displacement, put it in a sample of water and see how much the water goes up. And then you would mass it to calculate the density and you could just go look it up somewhere.